Hi, I'm Dr. John Valenza, Interim Dean of the University of Texas Dental Branch at Houston. Welcome to the UT Behavioral and Biomedical Sciences Building on the South Campus. This facility opened in February and now houses several of our dental branch researchers. We're about a mile away from their old labs, but when the new dental branch building opens in 2012, this building and the new dental school will be connected. When you hear the words research, discovery, and innovation, what do you think of? A laboratory setting like this? Today at the dental branch, research certainly happens in laboratories, but also in offices, clinics, with our electronic patient record, and in teaching and learning. Research is, along with patient care, one of our foundations as a dental school. And the environment of UT Health, the Texas Medical Center, and the greater Houston area provides unparalleled resources for research. The Dental Branch Research Enterprise excels in many areas, such as biomarkers, oral cancer, immunology, biomaterials and bioengineering, periodontal disease, informatics, clinical technology, and educational research. Here's just a few of our researchers to share their stories. Our research is in salivary exocrinology, which is salivary function of the glands of the oral cavity. And within that research area, we focus on salivary biomarkers for the detection of cancers, and more or less focus on uh, you know, signaling between salivary glands and other tissues of the body. My research interest is bio-inspired biomaterials for bone regeneration, dental and orthopedic implant devices, and cancer treatment. The biomaterials we develop could, use, could be used to treat cliff pilot, segmental bone fracture, to treat infections, to treat uh, the cancers such as gliomas, melanoma. Well, my area of research is in the field of biomedical informatics, which is concerned with the use of data, information, and knowledge uh, to try and improve human health. Um, what I'm really interested in is how to compile information from different places and sources, um, and also to present it to both patients and to dentists and dental hygienists and other providers uh, to help them uh, do their jobs better. At the dental school, we're looking at outcomes that relate to dental education. So are the students learning the knowledge, the skills, and the attitudes that are expected for uh, to be a dentist or an academic dentist uh, a professional in that field? It's not enough to know that they know it. The key question that we have to look at and investigate is, can they actually perform those skills? For my entire career, including when I first started working on my PhD, I've been interested in the way the body responds to viral infections, and more specifically, how viruses are involved in the um, genesis of certain types of cancers. I've studied uh, primarily human papillomavirus, and my laboratory was one of the first laboratories to show that human papillomavirus is present in the mouth in a high percentage of individuals, and that it's associated with certain cancers in the mouth. The viruses that are associated with cancer are present in many, many people in the population but it's only a small number of people that go on to get the cancers that are associated with those viruses. So one of the biggest questions to answer in the field of viral carcinogenesis is, what is it about the genetic makeup of certain individuals who are infected with viruses that causes them to then develop a cancer that's related to that virus? Our uh, research is a collaborative um, project between UT Dental Branch and MD Anderson Cancer Center. Uh, we are uh, designing clinical trials to study the healing effects of low-level lasers on uh, oral mucositis. These oral lesions are side effects seen uh, amongst uh, head and neck cancer patients after receiving uh, radiation chemotherapy. The other research that we are uh, doing is also is a joint project between University of Texas Dental Branch and uh, University of Sao Paulo. And in this research, we are uh, looking at the effects also of low-level laser therapy on stem cells, uh, on dentin. So our goal for this research is to accelerate dentin formation and, and, and hopefully reduce the chance of like root canal therapy. 
I do research because it's more or less a calling. It's something you feel good about and you just really love it and have a great passion for it. I'm doing research because I'm interested in translational research. So I hope the technologies and the products developed in my lab could uh, benefit a patient down the road. I do informatics research because I really believe that um, it has the great potential to impact a very large number of, of people and by people I mean both patients and providers. So I do research because of curiosity. I really like to combine like new technology and like treating patients and this to improve the quality of care that I give to my patients. I do research because I like to improve the quality of life of my patients. I do research because I'm interested in bettering the health of all mankind. It comes back to how things are taught and how we study them to make sure that what we're teaching is the very best it needs to be. And that's what educational research is all about. As we transition to new facilities, we also have a change in leadership. Dr. Karen Stortz, who has served as Associate Dean for Research since 2003, is retiring from administration, but will continue her research part-time as a member of our team. Succeeding her is Dr. Peter Triolo, who will take on the role of Interim Associate Dean in addition to his responsibilities as Chief Information Officer for the Dental Branch. The next V-Flash will be our 12th, marking our one-year anniversary. So stay tuned for this upcoming special episode as we continue to highlight the faculty, staff, and students of the dental branch. As always, thanks for watching. The best is yet to come.